My guest was raped, left violated, and broken. Her life became a downward spiral of hopelessness and fear until a series of visions opened the way for her to be free of guilt, free of shame, I mean completely free. Now it's your turn. Donna Grisham was born prematurely and literally had to fight for life to survive. As a child, her father took her and her siblings and left her mother stranded on the side of the road. And when she was 16, things got even worse. Donna, you look strong, healthy, vibrant, but what happened at 16? Said um, the worst nightmare of my life happened. Uh, I happened to go to uh, a bowling alley with a friend of mine. Her parents picked me up and we went to the bowling alley. Met two guys and during the time we were bowling, she started talking to one of the guys and she really got you know close and she, uh, they were talking about going riding. They wanted us to go ride and she came back over to me. She started talking. She said, they want us to go ride and I said, I can't do that. I said, my grandmother told me not to leave the bowling alley. So, uh, she kept on and on, and as you know, sometimes when you're 16, peer pressure, you just fall into the peer pressure. So I left with them, and honestly, when I was leaving the bowling alley, as we were leaving, driving off, my thought was, I'm leaving with two people, strangers that I don't even know. And in the back of my mind, what am I doing? but I never said anything, so I went ahead and the, the other guy that she liked wanted to go and pick up his truck. And so they stopped to pick up his truck and we, she got out and so I went to get out also and she said, no, she said, You're, he's gonna take you back to the bowl and he'll take you back. And I thought, I don't wanna go with him. I want to go with you. And she said, you'll, you'll be fine. He ended up pulling off and when he pulled off, he drove a little ways and pulled into an alley way and raped me and after that he opened the door and said get out and he pulled, dropped me on the side of the road and I remember when I fell I, I skint my arm up and so um, as I'm walking trying to get back to the bowling alley and that wasn't very far from the bowling alley so I walk, got finally finally made it back to the bowling alley and as I made it back to the bowling alley I went in and I started and I saw her and the other guy, they had already mm -hmm. gotten back there. I, I didn't even, I don't even think I said anything. I just ran to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom and she came in after me. After she came in, uh, she said, what is going on? What is your problem? And I said, he raped me. And she said, no, just say what it was, Donna. It's consensual. And I said, he raped me. Like, do you hear me? He raped me. And she just kept saying, it's consensual. And she walked out. And I, I was like, standing there going, now let me go back. When he dropped me off, the one thing he said to me, he said, nobody's ever going to believe you. Then the girl, my friend, supposed to be my friend, telling me that it's consensual, that it wasn't rape. And I was like, it's, it's happening. It's exactly what he said. She doesn't believe me. Who else is going to believe me? So I took it and I packaged it and I wasn't going, I wasn't going to say anything. I was never going to talk about this. But you had no choice because what happened? I ended up pregnant and I ended up 25 weeks pregnant. And I don't know if people realize how far along that is. That's a, a baby can survive at 25 weeks. My mom came. We end up uh, going to the doctor. I don't remember her driving to the doctor. I don't remember her uh, us go, walking in the doctor's office. I don't remember being in the doctor's office. Said the only thing I remember is walking out of the doctor's office. So I had to somehow get in that doctor's office. I walk, as we were walking out, my mother was walking before me, and my mother said, uh, I ought to just leave and, and never 
you know, uh, and never come back. And at that time, at that point, that even broke me even more. That was just another breaking of just tearing my, ripping my heart out. And she made the decision to take me to the abortion clinic in Birmingham, Alabama. I ended up um, having what they call a saline abortion. A saline abortion is where they inject the woman in the womb and the, the um, saline, the solution, it's a salt solution that goes into the, the, the womb and to the abdomen and it, the baby drinks that and it kills the baby, burns the baby from the inside out. And I started having like, like pains and they, my mom had to take me to the hospital, which was the Baptist Medical Center Hospital in Birmingham. They took me there. Now let me go back to the, the Planned Parenthood clinic. Planned Parenthood, the clinic never told me that it was a baby. They told me it was a blob of tissue. I give birth to a, a baby, 25 week baby, uh, it, I end up, the nurse was supposed to close the curtain and she didn't close the curtain. I happened to look over and in a jar was my baby and I lost it. I commenced to screaming, I commenced to, I mean, I was saying, I want my baby, they were, I mean, and nurses, interns, doctors, everything, it was just, you know, everyone was just coming around me trying to quiet me up, be quiet, shh, shh, and the doctor said, close that curtain now, and the nurse closed the curtain and she got in my face, she said, you shut up, you're going to be just fine, and when she said those words, I went black because I guess they must have gave me something to knock me out. And the next thing I remembered, in the, I'm in the back seat of my mom's car on the way back. And, and you know, there's a dark side, many dark sides of murdering children. But there's a dark side most people don't talk about. There is a trauma of the mother. And some are totally aware of it, and some live with it, and don't wonder why they are the way they are. But you can't murder your own child without having a consequence. What was yeah. yours? Uh, I lived with nightmares. I mean, Sid, I would have nightmares at night of babies like drowning in blood. And I would try to save these babies and all to, I'd wake up with sweat. I mean, I would have sweat all over me and I would just, all of a sudden, the reality uh, I w the reality of what I had done, it was like, it's, that's my baby. I ended up in the hospital numerous times, numerous times trying to commit suicide. And I, and honestly, I look back and I couldn't even do that right. And but then God. at 24, she's pregnant mm -hmm. again. Yeah. I end up uh, meeting this guy, and we're, I'm, you know, we're friends. I'm friends with his sister, and we, uh, one thing led to the other, and it went too far. And next thing I know, I found out I'm pregnant, and uh, I. I wasn't going to tell my mom, and I was sitting at the table with her at her house, and all of a sudden my mom looks at me and she said, you're pregnant, and I thought, mm. how in the world, how in the world, and she said, mothers just know this, and so she said, everything will be okay, and I thought, okay, so we went to bed, got up the next morning, and she said, let's go shopping under the pretense of going shopping in Savannah, Georgia, from Brunswick to Savannah, we drive to Savannah, and I'm not thinking about anything. I'm just, you know, sitting there, just caught up in what's going to happen with my life, what I'm going to do, what choices I'm going to make, what, and we go, and we pull up to this place, and I'm, I'm still not paying attention, and I go to open the door. When I open the door, I saw the women inside, and as I looked and the faces of these women, some of these women, the, the look on their face, it was like you knew, you know, they were, they were heartbroken. And then I all heard and said, if it wasn't an audible voice, it might as well be. But I heard a voice say, run. Well, let me just say, the devil's not going to tell you to run from abortion clinic. 
and I didn't know the voice of God because I didn't know God at that time. I didn't even know if he was real. And so I stopped and I went ahead with it. And the next thing I know, I'm on the table and I had the second one was the suction abortion. And it's where they uh, use a cranial tube and they it's like a vacuum cleaner that sucks the parts of the baby are sucked in. And I, as I laid there and they turned the machine on, the moment they turned the machine on, I was like, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. And they didn't turn it off, Sid. It was too late. It was too late. And so I, I thought, God, what have I done? What have I done to my babies? Now, you went to a pastor, and this pastor had the good sense to tell you you're forgiven, mm -hmm. but you couldn't accept it. I couldn't accept it because, I, first of all, I didn't know if he was even, God was even real. I, I, I couldn't, I mean, my, I, growing up, I grew up in a church that didn't believe in healing, didn't believe in miracles, and I just thought, what in the world do I need, you know? And so what can he do for me? And that I had such shame and such guilt and, and I mean I was so plagued by what I had done what I had allowed that I didn't speak up that I didn't say no I don't want to do this forgiveness was nowhere there was no way that I could be forgiven that was my thought I, there's no way I can be forgiven so what did you do with all those hurts inside of you well I buried them I basically buried them and uh, like I said, I was living to die. I was, I was on a road to destruction, on a path to destruction. And then it happened again. You got pregnant again. I did. I was in love with the father. And whenever uh, I found out I was pregnant and we talked and we were going to get married, we even went and got blood tests because you had to get blood tests back then. So I went and got blood tests and I went to stay with a friend and he went back to his house and called him the next morning and his mother said, he don't want to talk to you. And oh. I thought, here we go again. Um, I get myself in these positions and where is God? The people talk about God. Where is he? You know, and so I ended up uh, going to a, um, some ladies at the church that I was going to uh, mentioned PTL and mentioned a girl's home. It's a no, heritage. So abortion wasn't even no, your abortion, in vocabulary in fact, then. No, no. The pastor, actually a pastor, uh, the, another pastor, he actually said, you know, there we'll talk to your mom choices. and we'll let her know you there's only... Baby. Two choices. It's either adoption. you keep your baby abortion or you put adoption. your baby up for adoption. Abortion is not in the picture. And so I ended up um, going over to a friend's house, you know, and so I end up on the floor and I'm on my knees and I'm really just just having these thoughts in my head. And I said, I said, I said, God, I said, I said, look at the mess that I made. I said, can you really, are you, if you're, if you're real, can you do anything? Can you do anything with this mess that I've made in my life? And so I, I heard like inside, uh, turn on the TV. And I thought, mm, that's weird. That's not. Mm. <laughs> and so I just ignored it and I, you know, all of a sudden I heard it again, turn on, and the remote's next to me. And all of a sudden I look down and the remote's there and I'm angry. And I picked the remote up and I turned the TV on like that. I said, you know, and when the TV came on, Tammy Faye Baker, Tammy Faye Baker was singing a song that says, he'll take your mistakes and turn them into a miracle. In that moment, I knew that God was going to, you know, I knew that, that that was where I was supposed to go. And so I went to PTL, and one day after my meeting with my counselor, I go back to my room, and I'm on, I go back, and I just sit, I just lay prostrate on my face before God, and I just start crying, and I'm crying, and I said, I don't know whether you're real or not, but if you are, I need to know what you want me to do. And all of a sudden, I had a vision. And in the vision, I was, saw Jesus. 
and I was walking towards him and I had a baby. I was carrying this baby and I was walking towards him and I never once took my eyes off of him. I just looked and the moment I caught eyes with him, his eyes, Sid, was the most loving, caring, I mean, not judgmental. He, not judgmental. He didn't look at me like I was trash because the guy told me, he said, you're nothing but trash. Nobody will ever want you. And when I saw those eyes, it, they just pierced my heart. And all of a sudden, I handed the baby to him and I looked at him and I walked away and he smiled and I smiled and I turned and walked away. Well, when you have a vision, sometimes, I don't know about you, if you've ever had visions or dreams, you try to figure it out. So you try to put your little take. So my little take was, is I'm putting this baby up for adoption. That's exactly, I'm giving him to, to or giving the baby to the Lord. So I'm, you know, just putting them up for adoption. I go to sleep that night and I wake up and I get a pa I have a pass to go to, back to Georgia to, to visit my mom. My mother um, picked me up and uh, we go to sleep that, that night. We talk. We talk about, you know, the, how the ride was and some different things. And we go to bed and we get up and she wants to go to breakfast. And so she said, let's go to breakfast. And she said, but at first I want to take you to the furniture, to the furniture store up the, around the corner from us. And she said, I got something to show you. And so I get to the furniture store and we're in the furniture store and we're looking around. And as we're looking around, I'm just looking at different furniture. And she said, Donna, come back here. And so I went back there and she's standing next to a crib. And she goes, what do you think? and honestly said, I thought it was a trick question. I honestly thought it was a trick question. And I looked at her and I didn't know what to think. And as I looked at her, she looked at me and she said, Donna, God's told me I'm to do whatever I can to help you raise this baby. And that moment was the beginning of not only restoration in my life. You know, I had had that encounter with Jesus. And at that point, I realized, first of all, I realized Jesus was real. He was real to me. And then that moment with my mom, I began to see the, the pieces. You know, I've... I, I lived my life with feeling like there was like a rubber rubber bands around me, just tight, so tight, and I was so bound. I was bound by guilt. I was bound by shame. I was bound by, you know, just all the garbage the enemy would. I was no good. I was trash. I was never going to amount to anything, never. And at that moment, he started breaking off those pieces, breaking off those rubber bands, he just, they just started snapping, just started snapping. You needed, and you can picture this, she needed assurance that her two babies that were murdered in the womb ended up in heaven. You can understand that. God is so good. What happened? I was translated, and I know the difference between a vision, translation, and dreams. And I happened to be in Jacksonville, Florida with a small group of women, and we were at a just a little place worshiping, and I was on this couch, and next thing I know, I'm sitting on this park bench. And I'm telling you, said this park bench was unlike any kind of park bench I'd ever seen. There was gold. I mean, I was like t so taken with this park bench, and then I happened to look up, and, and and the, I mean, it, when you, you can't describe the colors in, in, in heaven, things are so beautiful. But what I noticed is a little girl and a little boy. They come running up to me. And as they're running up to me, they climb up in my lap. And as they come up in my lap, they start kissing me, one on one cheek and one on the other cheek. And they start telling me, we love you, Mommy. We love you, Mommy. We love you. They said, we forgive you. Or they said, first of all, they said, we forgive you, Mommy. We forgive you, Mommy. We forgive you. Then they said, we love you, Mommy. We love you, Mommy. We love you. And they said, we'll see you again. And then instantly I was back on that couch. Those of you that have had abortions, those of you that have had trauma, those of you that are living in shame and guilt or regret for anything, today is your day of freedom. Yes. 
Be right back. Call now and get Donna Grisham's brand new powerful book, Journeys of Choice, and her anointed two-part audio CD set, Destination Freedom. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9791. At 16 years old, Donna Grisham was raped, left violated, broken, and pregnant. She had an abortion. Her life quickly became a downward spiral of hopelessness and fear. Donna has interwoven a collection of 15 different testimonies in her book, Journeys of Choice, including her own powerful story. Each are uniquely written to reveal the extraordinary power of choice. You will understand how choosing life versus death not only affects the baby, but it also impacts the father, the mother, the grandparents, and siblings. It affects the next generation as well. Receive an impartation of wisdom on how to make godly decisions in the midst of trauma and crisis. Receive supernatural redemption from a broken past. Understand the power of forgiveness. Learn how to get set free from regrets, shame, sin, past abuse, abandonment, and addictions. Understand how to walk again in God's divine promises and plans for your life. Anyone who has had an abortion or is considering an abortion or who know someone who has had an abortion must read this book. You will also receive Donna Grisham's two-part audio CD set, Destination Freedom. In her two-part audio CD series, Donna will share and impart the wisdom and hope she has received from the Word of God, as well as minister to your deep hurts, pray for you and over you. Release supernatural freedom into every area of your life. Speak God's purpose and plans over you. Donna wants you to know that you don't have to live in the regrets of past choices. Don't let the regrets of your past determine your future. Don't miss out on getting Donna Grisham's brand new powerful book, Journeys of Choice, and her anointed two-part audio CD set, Destination Freedom. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9791. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9791 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Donna, you say we don't have to live in regret, but yet we've done some horrible things. We know we're forgiven, but why do you say we don't have to live in it? Because, Sid, you know, we, it's okay to regret choices that we've made. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's okay to regret some decisions that we've made, but we don't have to live in that regret. We don't have to live in the pain of our regrets. I regret not standing up and saying, no, I don't want to go through this. I don't want to have an abortion. I, re I regret my abortions. But I'm not living in that regret. I'm not living in that pain. I've been set free from that. The, the scripture that kind of just comes to me is Romans you know, 8, 1, for there is therefore now no condemnation. No condemnation. You know, when you have, you know, you talk about an experiential knowledge. When I had that experiential, that, that moment with Jesus, His love, that scripture to me, it, nothing that the enemy says to me, it, it, you know, I receive because I know now exactly what that scripture means. That means whatever the devil's trying to condemn you of, whatever the devil's, the lie the devil's trying to tell you, you don't have to receive it. He's trying to condemn you and you have been, God has freed you. He freed you on the cross. When Jesus went to the cross, that choice you made went to the cross with him. That, that decision you made, that those, the, the sin you've been in, anything. And God wants you to know that you are not condemned. He nailed those sins to the cross. Don't let the regrets of your past determine your future. Say this prayer with me and open yourself up to experiential knowledge of God. Yeah. Out loud, repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God I'm, a I'm a sinner for which I'm so sorry. 
I believe the blood of Jesus is enough to wash away every bad thing I've ever done. And in God's sight, He remembers my sins no more. Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior and my Lord. Amen.